I now have the honor of presenting the 2022 Pine Honor Prize, this university's highest undergraduate distinction. This award was established in 1921 as a memorial to Moses Taylor Pine of the class of 1877. It is presented annually to the member or members of the senior class who most clearly manifested excellent scholarship, strength of character, and effective leadership in support of the best interests of Princeton University. This year's prize will be jointly conferred on Claire Wayner and Christian Potter. Please join me in welcoming Claire Wayner to the stage. I'm going to I'm going to embarrass you with some remarks here okay. first. So Claire Wayner sees her life's work as finding solutions to climate change, and her time at Princeton has been focused on what she calls solutions-oriented sustainability, rolling up my sleeves and trying to get things done. Her academic work and extracurricular activities at Princeton provide a veritable litany of examples of sleeve rolling on behalf of the planet and of creating real change in campus sustainability with a leadership style characterized by both collaboration and persistence. Claire's academic concentration is in environmental engineering, and her studies have been interdisciplinary, including classes in public policy, environmental science, and sustainability. She has been recognized many times already for her academic achievements, she is a two-time recipient of the Shapiro Prize for Academic Excellence and a recipient of the Truman Scholarship for Public Service, the George B. Woods Sophomore Legacy Prize, and the Udall Scholarship for Environmental Leadership. She was also elected as an Omen Darling Scholar for Princeton Scholars in the Nation's Service Initiative. Claire's teachers rave about her work as a scholar and her contributions to the classroom, lab, and beyond. Her senior thesis research is focused on bioenergy as a sustainable, low-carbon energy resource and is part of Princeton's Net Zero America project. Claire's thesis advisor, Professor Jesse Jenkins, says she is, quote, the most outstanding undergraduate student that I have had the pleasure to work with. She is dedicated to using her talents to accelerate the transition to a more sustainable energy system. Gabriel Vecchi, Professor of Geosciences and Director of the High Meadows Environmental Institute, writing on behalf of the HMEI faculty, says Claire is the best of the best at Princeton University. She speaks to the ideals. Her mentors also praise her leadership both on campus and in the larger community of practice in sustainable energy. Shauna Weber, director of the Office of Sustainability, said she would unhesitatingly characterize Claire's impact on campus sustainability as transformational. Among, among examples of her impact on this campus, she has served as the eco-rep student leader for the Office of Sustainability, is president of the Student Climate Initiative, and formalized sustainability advocacy as an integral part of the undergraduate student government and she somehow also finds time to look out for the birds. She has co-founded the Princeton Birding Society and a campaign for bird-friendly glass on Princeton's campus. Claire has also written many columns for the Daily Princetonian about sustainability topics and has been a contributing author on national technical reports about energy storage policy Claire, your leadership and advocacy have indeed been transformative, both for the sustainability of campus and, I suspect, for the future of the planet. We look forward to seeing what you will make possible. Congratulations. I'm going to congratulate you. I'm going to hand you this. Congratulations.
Thank you. I apologize for the number of times that you just had to hear the word sustainability. Because if I had a million dollars for every time he said it. Um, all right. My favorite spot in Princeton is a 15-minute walk south of campus, a place that not many students know about, but one that I know like the back of my hand, the Charles Rogers Wildlife Refuge. Named after an ornithology professor who taught at Princeton from 1920 to 1977, the property, a mix of marshland and forest, grassy fields and riverbanks, is my safe haven. I've gone there countless mornings with my birding buddies, binoculars in hand, and I've seen over 130 species of birds there, plus the occasional deer, fox, coyote, mink, and beaver. Whenever I'm feeling stressed or overwhelmed, I know a hike in Charles Rogers is sure to calm me down. My friends often ask me why I'm not an ecology major, given my love for the outdoors. This is a question that I've struggled with ever since coming to Princeton. With time, I've realized that while I would have been content studying ecology 50 or 100 years ago, the urgency of the climate crisis today requires my full academic attention. This is why I've been so grateful to have found at Princeton a home in the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department, as well as the Anlinger Center for Energy and the Environment and the High Meadows Environmental Institute. By immersing myself in research and classes in each of these three places, I've been able to turn my Princeton education into an experience that I feel is making a tangible difference. Seeing my senior thesis advisor, Professor Jesse Jenkins, take results from our lab's computer modeling of the nation's energy system and communicate them directly with policymakers has been incredibly inspiring. So too is seeing what Princeton, under the strong leadership of the Office of Sustainability, where I've worked since freshman year, is doing to reduce its campus greenhouse gas emissions. Getting involved in projects like these allows me to understand the role that engineering majors like me can play in the change-making process, using data-driven methods to create the best solutions possible. I could not have gotten to where I am today without the support of all of my mentors, my professors, TAs, Princeton alumni, and university staff and administrators, too many to name right now, who have all taught me to think in interdisciplinary ways to seek out collaboration and compromise. At the same time that the climate crisis cultivates a constant urgency in everything I do, another lesson I've learned while at Princeton is the need to slow down, to take a deep breath, relax, to just hang out with other people because admittedly I didn't really know what the value of hanging out was when I came here. <laughs> For that, I am grateful to all of my friends, from the climbing team, the birding society, environmental advocacy groups, student government, outdoor action, and my eating club, especially to those of you who woke up early on a Saturday to come here today, because this is early for undergrads. <laughs> I would not know nearly all that I do now about being a human without you. Finally, I want to thank my family, my parents, brother, and grandparents for teaching me to be independent, encouraging me, but never pushing me. Thank you for always being there and always having faith in me. Now in just three months, I go out into the world holding my Princeton diploma, equipped with the problem-solving and critical thinking skills necessary for my life's mission. Cutting greenhouse gas emissions as rapidly as possible in an attempt to protect and save all the landscapes, people, birds, and communities that grace this planet. I'll close with a quote from Lord of the Rings, one of my favorite book series. In this scene, I like to imagine Frodo is talking about the climate crisis when he says to Gandalf, I wish it need not have happened in my time. But Gandalf replies with some sage wisdom I try to take to heart every day, so do I, and so do all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. Thank you again for this great honor.
Well, it's the phrase to, to, to talk about uh, what it is to, to deal with the time that, that we are given. Claire, I now have to say that due to COVID protocols, our second uh, winner, Christian Potter, is going to join us via Zoom. So I'm going to take a moment here. And there's Christian. Chris. Christian, while we wish you were here in person, we are grateful that you are still able to be with us today. Please join me in welcoming Christian to the virtual stage. Christian, I don't know what kind of Zoom feed we're getting you, but I hope you could see and take in that standing ovation that you just received. Christian Potter is a dedicated and public-spirited student leader who has served classmates in a variety of roles ever since they first elected him to office back in the eighth grade. <laughs> Here at Princeton, he has demonstrated a thorough commitment to being in the nation's service in the service of humanity through his studies of political systems and change, and through his achievements in student government. Christian's academic concentration is in the School of Public and International Affairs, and his intellectual curiosity and academic excellence have been recognized previously with the Shapiro Prize. His work also garnered the R. W. Vandeveld Award, the School, the School of Public and International Affairs Principal Academic Award for Juniors. Christian's teachers praise both his enterprise and generosity of spirit in the classroom and his leadership on campus. Emily Pronin, associate professor in the Department of Psychology, said Christian is a person who I imagine will excel at any path he chooses, whether it be research, policy, elected office, or any other path. Julian Zelizer, the Malcolm Stevenson Forbes Class of 1941 Professor of History and Public Affairs, who is Christian's senior thesis advisor, said, Christian has the ability to bring the analytic tools of political science to help analyze public policy. He stands well above even the very best. He has the kind of intellectual skills and engagement that professors are always hoping to encounter. Christian has built his experience in public policy through two internships in the U.S. House of Representatives, as well as a research internship with the Brookings Institution. On campus, Christian has led with compassion and inspiration as we navigated the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. As president of the undergraduate student government, Christian spearheaded an effort to modify the grading policy for students dealing with disparate home learning situations. Said Dean of the College, Jill Dolan, Christian worked with me and my staff to create a policy that would suit most students' needs for virtual learning while maintaining the storied rigor of a Princeton education. He consulted student groups and with me and my peers in a respectful, interactive way that made us all feel partners in an historical moment in which demands are the lingua franca, Christian instead approached this complex crisis-driven work as a dialogue between students and faculty and helped facilitate an effective, sensible solution. In his role as USG president, Christian spoke at the traditional bonfire that celebrates the football team's success against Harvard and Yale. And his words resonate with me still. He said, let the lighting of this bonfire be the ultimate reignition of community. Christian, 
Your academic accomplishments and your commitment to the thoughtful leadership suggest that the future is in great hands. We are eager to follow your pursuits in the years to come. Congratulations. Thank you, President Eisgruber, um, for that most generous introduction. <clears throat> Unfortunately, uh, as the president mentioned, I am not able to attend today's uh, ceremony in person, and you can all probably guess why. Um, but it, it is a reminder for me that we're still working through this pandemic, and truly it speaks to a large portion of my Princeton experience. Um, but it's also a sign that we've made massive progress given that my fellow Princetonians in isolation and I are looking forward to healthy releases soon. And um, given that I can uh, zoom into this program today. So I'd like to thank uh, Lucian uh, and the whole team for, for making this possible behind the scenes. <laughs> the first thing that happened to me at Princeton was an argument. I was driving into town with my mom to tour the campus as a high schooler. And we had barely gotten past that sign that reads, welcome to Princeton Township, settled 1685, when she exclaimed, I kid you not, I think even the grass is just different, greener here. I could not take it. As if the pressure of applying to a school like Princeton weren't enough with its famed professors, alumni, and traditions, now even the grass was the standard against which I'd have to measure myself the ensuing argument got very heated. What I didn't know at the time, other than of course, that I would actually attend Princeton in the not too distant future, was that at Princeton, I would learn a lot about argument, about making a point, about challenging an idea. Sometimes it can be nerve wracking. In my very first semester at Princeton, in the over-enrolled introductory microeconomics lecture in Makash 50, Famed economist Harvey Rosen paused from the graph that he was chalking onto the blackboard to say the following in front of all 450 students. Christian, we'd previously met briefly in office hours. What's wrong? Why do you have that scowl on your face? Thankfully, the then incommodious wooden desk chairs in Makash kept me from fainting. Well, professor, again, in front of everyone, I think the marginal social cost curve goes above the marginal private cost curve or something equally absurd to be explaining to a man who would explain concepts like this to the president of the United States. Professor Rosen turned back toward the board as I felt about 900 eyeballs glued to me. And he said, an untenured professor would be in hot water for making the same mistake. <laughs> Uh, and, he read, and he reached for the eraser. Now, that was probably my intellectual peak at Princeton, or so I thought, and, and uh, so I thought I'd share that example today. But the argumentation, of course, continued. In my very first precepts in Professor Kevin Cruz's history class, we argue over how progressive the New Deal really was. In the spring of 2020, the infamous, we argue over whether or not we'd be sent home. In the late spring, as it progressed, for how long we'd be home, and today, how, but less so whether, we'll restore our community and move forward together. During the pandemic, I was entrusted by my peers to argue again on behalf of the student body and the larger community in my capacities in student government for various policies that would improve life during the most difficult of times and hopefully change Princeton for the better on the other side. And in our senior years, we muster the research for our final arguments at Princeton, our theses. Now, Professor Zelizer, I promise it's coming. I've also done plenty of arguing with myself, which classes to take, what to study, whether and how to ask for help, how best to serve my community in a way that is authentic to me. Princeton has taught me what it means to argue in conversation, in dialogue, with counterparts and with ideas, how to do it fairly, and hopefully, yes, in the nation's service and the service of humanity. The truth is that the grass has not always been as green as can be at Princeton, for me and I think for many, but nor should we expect it to be. 
Our gratitude is then ever greater to those friends, mentors, professors, and other supporters who attempt to help to restore that horticultural order that my mother declared years ago. Starting with her, my father, and my twin sister, who love me unconditionally. To my first year professors, Cruz, Pronin, and Bogan, and old friends, Izzy and Vakash, who convinced me that Princeton really was the right place for me without outright saying so, and to all the professors and friends who have reminded me of that ever since. To my roommate, Ron, for pushing the limits of the possible and for pushing me. To the student body, for empowering me to serve in a role that required more of a leap of faith than any, than any amount of preparation. To the administrators and USG partners, especially Dean Dunn, Chitra, and Ashwin, who've helped me leave what I hope is a positive impact on the university in that role. And of course, to Dean Dolan, Dean Degnan, and President Ayaz Gruber for the, for the recognition today, which is to me more than anything, a reminder that one of the few standards worth measuring yourself against is belief in and love for a community that has given you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. I would invite you all to join me in applauding once more our two Pine Prize winners one last time. Our Pine Prize winners, Claire Wayner and Christian Potter. <laughs>